Hello friend, so nice to see you here today. This is uh, episode 11 of uh, Coffee with Hannele Korhonen, Happy Customers and Happy Lawyers. And I'm Hannele from Lawyers Design School. And in these weekly live sessions, uh, you will get actionable advice on and tips on how to get more happy clients and make yourself a happy lawyer too, with the help of legal design thinking. Uh, the comment and question and answers box is, is open, so feel free to, to leave comments or questions if you have any, and I will try my best to, to answer them. But today our topic is visual law. What role can visualizations and visual thinking uh, have in your lawyer work and, and your business? And you know, in the legal world of text and more text, uh, visual law is still quite a hidden, hidden gem that's just waiting, waiting uh, to be found by conscious and human-friendly lawyers like yourself. So it's time to start exploring the possibilities. Uh, this is your opportunity to get, uh, get ahead of your game and add visual tools to your uh, lawyer toolbox. So let's get going. What is visual law? First, I think that I need to clarify um, that when I talk about visual law, I'm not talking about pretty pictures or drawing. Visual law is not art. Um, and this is the most common misunderstanding that people have related to visual law. So it's important to get that straightened out. Uh, also because this, this misunderstanding creates a lot of uh, unnecessary fear and obstacles to start using visualization um, tools in lawyers' work. So visual law does not equal to images or illustrations. Surely images and illustrations can be part of visual law, uh, sort of like end results, but, uh, but they are a small part of the, of the whole, whole concept of visual law. And there's so much more, more to this than that. And also, I want to say that you don't have to be a graphic designer to be able to use visual law in your work. All you need to do for now is your brains, um, eyes and hands and willingness to stretch your thinking, I promise. And as Ben uh, Schneiderman quote says, the purpose of visualization is insight, not pictures. So visual law means using visual elements in legal uh, content, uh, like let's say in your uh, legal documents. And it means how you can, uh, how you can graphically edit uh, your text or uh, uh, graphically present legal information uh, for effective communication. And to get going with you using visual law in your legal content, you, you, can, you have so many, so many options to choose from. For example, you can work on the text attributes uh, in, your, in your document, like boldings or, or italics. Play with the font size or colors to highlight parts of the text to attract your client's attention. That's, that's really simple. Uh, but also you can improve the layout of, of your text with bullet points, uh, blank space, adding blank space, uh, indentation or grids to create rhythm uh, and help your client client to focus on the text. And you can also create infographics uh, like timelines and flowcharts, swim lanes or tables to explain, uh, clarify and summarize the key content um, of your information. And you can also add icons uh, to make your uh, content more interesting and appealing and help client to navigate uh, the document more easily. And the goal of these, these means is to make your legal information and advice, ad, advice uh, more engaging and empowering for your client. And you can use these opportunities really anywhere from your emails to, to contracts, to letters, um, to even court documents. And visual law is not just uh, to help your clients, because I bet that the judges, for example, would much rather save their time to um, understand the key points of your your argumentation uh, in a visual presentation rather than reading hours and hours to get get your point but uh, in addition to these visual elements uh, there's just much more than that and, and also more more than just graphic editing because visual law also means deploying uh, visual thinking in your legal work 
either when you're working solo or, or in a team. And uh, deploying visual thinking means that you organize or structure and make sense of your thoughts and ideas on paper, uh, canvas or, or other visual means. Uh, because visualization is not just kind of stating the facts uh, as they are, but it's also a process to find out what the facts actually are and what are the connections between certain facts or events or items. So when you draw a line, for example, on a paper or make decisions about certain visual elements to make them big or small, or you position them near or far from each other, you have to think about whether this is actually kind of legally correct. And sometimes you actually find errors in your own legal thinking and argumentation through, through this visual, visual exercise. And this is also the reason why, why legal expertise is actually needed uh, oftentimes when someone is visualizing legal content, because you need to understand the legal context and the substance uh, to be able to have the information correct in the outcome. So multidisciplinary teams of lawyers and information designers and graphic designers are really golden here in this work. And I have had uh, some really good examples of the power of visual thinking in the visual, uh, visual law workshops uh, in the Lawyers Design School. One time, for example, there was a, a, a law firm partner who was quite skeptical, I must say, about the value and meaning of, of legal design thinking and visual law in the first place. And then he started to um, do one of my exercises, visualization exercises, and he worked on a confidentiality clause that had been part of the law firm's uh, template for years and years. And all of a sudden, he realized something about the clause and, and started re re reverse engineering somehow his thinking. And he, he kept saying, like, this can't be right. Uh, but there it was, uh, the wording in the confidentiality clause uh, was actually wrong. And no one had figured that out until that moment. And it was the exercise of creating a visual representation, which was a timeline in this, uh, this particular exercise of that clause that made him realize that what was missing. So pretty powerful. And for him, this law firm partner, the value of, of visual law in that, uh, in that moment was to make him prove his thinking and kind of re-evaluating re the existing work product based on this insight that, that he gained. And what's also really cool is that visual thinking and visual law can skyrocket your teamwork and, and collaboration uh, to a whole new level. Because you know how working together can sometimes be really challenging, especially if you're working on something new or try to come up with new ideas or make, make sense of, of uh, complex, complex uh, things. Like where do you, where do you even start that uh, discussion? But visual law offers very practical and easy ways to get going with innovation and facilitate collaboration because the kind of the visual law makes you makes your thinking process visible. All of these thoughts and abstract and foggy threads that you have flying around in your head uh, that are really difficult to, to express in words. But then you are able to get them out uh, visually. Out, out of your head visually and then you're able to make sense and and make others see what you see in your mind and you're as able to see kind of these hidden connections get insight and aha moments by processing your thoughts visually that's where the magic happens so to say and this is not possible if you're just uh, working uh, if you're just working with text not not in a similar way and this is actually why designers use a lot of sticky notes and, and uh, different canvases to catch and organize pieces of data in a meaningful way. And these vis visualization tools in, in legal design thinking help to find these connections between different details uh, and understand the bigger picture. And what's really interesting is that visualization taps um, taps into different parts of, of our brains than, for example, just writing that is more familiar for lawyers. So visualization helps us uh, kind of unlock nonverbal thinking and creativity. 
And I want to recommend that Tim, Tim Brown in his book Change by Design explains how this visualization helps us to collaborate and build, uh, build on top of other team members' ideas and, and also spark new thinking. And that's, that's a really good book to read. And we have also created a few very effective canvases for legal design workshops in, in Lawyers Design School. And they work really wonders uh, in facilitating discussions and, and getting results. So why visual law is important? Why am I, why am I talking about it right now? The visual, vis visuality is actually a really strong trend of our times. And just think about the power of simple images uh, on Instagram. Uh, those images that are able to crystallize some really foundational thought or piece of information on a single, single, uh, very, very simple uh, illustration or, or visualization. And our world is getting so complicated that we need new ways to grasp uh, relevant information in a simple way, because there is just so much information that we need to find the relevant parts and be able to, to understand them, understand the information quickly. And the importance of, of visuality and these visual skills is growing all the time. So it's putting pressure for, for us lawyers as well to, to uh, stay ahead of the game. And they are really part of the future of law. And we're all overloaded with information every day and, and we need to tackle this overwhelm somehow. And similarly, your clients are really confused uh, with the information flood. And uh, your clients are faced with exhausting wall of text uh, of legalese in situations where they need to make decisions, uh, compare information or take actions. Action while they might be a lot of uh, under a lot of uh, stress or pressure or hurry. So visual law helps you to help your clients to to navigate through this this overload and, and confusion. So visual law is really powerful. And eyesight vision is our strongest sense. We perceive information through our eyes and we create understanding, learn and memorize information uh, more easily when, when we get that through our eyes. So with visuals, you create clarity and you make content more memorable and impactful for your client. And it's also very personal and, and visual, um, visuality activates imagination because we process uh, visual information and emotions in the same parts of our brain. So visuality and emotions are strongly connected and together they, they create powerful memories. And I, I, I just actually uh, talked about uh, emotions in, in, um, in law in the previous episode, episode 10 in this series. So if you're interested in that, go, go take a look. But visual law is, is, I want to encourage you that visual law is possible for everyone uh, it, because it's based on our brain's ability to, to think visually regardless of our background or previous experience or skills. It's really possible. So uh, just start, start uh, taking, if, if you're interested, start taking simple uh, steps uh, today. Start with simple and learn as you go. You can do it. And if you're interested in, in Lawyers Design School and what we have, have to offer on visual law, take a look at our website, uh, lawyersdesignschool.com. But that was, uh, that was our topic today, visual law. Now it's your turn. What did you, what did you learn today? And what's your, what's your step, first step to, to explore visual law in your work? Let me know in the comments. But be sure to follow the next episodes where I will be sharing more insight uh, on how to improve your client experience with the legal design thinking. Uh, thank you. Th thank you so much for uh, watching this and joining today. And I'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment or drop me uh, a message to continue the discussion of, for happy clients and happy lawyers. Have a great day. Bye.